Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. Uh, we're fixing to go out and hang some swarm traps up. We're going to talk a little bit about trap placement, but before we do that, I want to uh, show you one more um, thing that I do for the trap. So I do hang some traps. It's not my preferred method. I don't really like them to swing and move, but I, I you know, I know... Uh, several guys that catch a lot of swarms and only hang them so I you know, while it may not be ideal it still works so what I have here is um, some one inch nylon strapping pretty much like what you would get in a cheap ratchet strap but I ordered it in a roll of like I think 50 yards or something off Amazon and I'll um, place that link in the description of the video the other thing that I have is uh, some rope, and so this is, um, I think it's three-eighths, no, quarter-inch nylon rope, 90 feet of that, and that's what we'll use to hoist these up in the tree with. Um, so we'll show you that after a while too. But for right now, I want to show you how I attach these. So these, I cut these about seven foot long, and it may be a little different for whatever, however your trap's designed. But what I want to do is I want to use this cleat right here um, as part of my mounting mechanism. And I'm going to wrap it underneath and put a screw there too. So, uh, so the way I'm going to do these, I'm going to attach them. I'm basically going to attach it like this. And I, it may not really matter how you attach them, but when you hoist this up over the limb, you actually want th this piece to go over the limb, go past your haul line. And when this goes over the tree limb, these straps will give this trap more stability. So that's how we're going to do it. So I'm just going to take this underneath here, about three or four inches, and attach it. What I have here is a uh, self-piercing lath screw, and they're about nine. They're not, they're an eight by nine sixteenths, and they got a big head on there like almost like a washer built into that that'll keep those from um, pulling through this strap and that's attached right there there's one side go to this side Just repeat the same process. Alright, so there's one side right there. The only um, reason I could see to mount this the other way, which would be to run the strap all the way across instead of from side to side, is if you don't have any drain holes, or if, you, or if your drain holes are only in the front, if you ran the straps the other way, you can make um, you know, the front shorter than the back, and that would tip your trap forward. But I have drain holes all the way around, so it doesn't matter if my you know how my box is tilted so I'm going to repeat this on the other side all right there we go so when we get to the tree pull these together we'll tie our rope right here toss the rope over the limb and um, pull that up until these straps go over you know go over that limb to help give it some stability but we'll show you that out there in a little bit like i said i just wanted to show you this little trick here before we get out there in the field we're fixing to hang this swarm trap in a tree and we're going to use the, the rope method that i've talked about a little bit it's not my preferred method but i know guys that catch lots and lots of swarms hanging them this way i've i've caught swarms this way myself um, so we're going to hang this from that tree limb up there if i can get a rope there it's a little bit tight but I don't have a lot of options here, so we're going to try this. Um, we are on a uh, creek bank here, so we got the field edge and a creek bank, 
And so um, those are both good um, landmarks that the bees can follow. And um, bees love wetland areas. Um, I used to do all my swarm trapping in and around wetlands and had very good success. It's going to be a little different for me this year because I'm in an upland setting. We do have um, some wet areas like this creek and, and things. So we're going to set a few up by this creek. My bee yard is um, about three or 400 yards from here. So if I have any swarms, possibly could catch uh, one of my swarms and not lose them. So um, I like this location because of the, the creek and because it's of its proximity to my bee yard. So um, what I've got here, like I said, I've got a quarter inch nylon rope and I've got a five ounce, um, it's a lead decoy weight. This is not ideal. I would recommend um, getting on Amazon or um, some other place and ordering, um, it's called a, I'll put a link in the description. It's called like a Forrester's bag or something like that. It's a weighted bag basically that Forrester's use to uh, throw over limbs and pull their rope, their rigging ropes up and things like that. But I'm gonna do it with this right here. And it's a little bit harder to get these heavier ropes in the trees, but we'll make this work. So I'm just gonna tie off to this decoy weight here. Like I said, this is a five ounce lead decoy weight. I used to have a better weight for this and a rope, but I'm not sure it made the trip with us to Tennessee. I'm not sure what happened to that. So, like I said, we're gonna try to get across this limb here. It may take a few attempts because of all the tree limbs in my way. So what we're looking to do is we want to get it close enough to the tree that um, I like it to touch the back of the trap to touch the tree, but that's you know a little bit hard to do to get it just right. So we'll see what we can do here. The reason I say the bag is better is because if this five ounce weight comes down and whacks you in the head, you're gonna know it. It's not gonna feel good. There's a honeybee right there, checking out this bush, this privet here, our bush honeysuckle. I mean, no blooms on it yet, but it's probably getting close. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, oh, look at that! First shot. Skill right there. A little stuck. I think it'll come on down now. Well, my five ounce weight may not quite be heavy enough. Well, it was a good throw, but the weight is not pulling the heavy string over the branch. The string's getting caught up in the uh, the bark of the tree. Let me try again. Yeah, like I said, let me see if I can get a stick and pull that thing down. to get there. There we go. All right, finally, finally. Yeah, like I said, I need a, I used to do this with paracord and it took less weight to get over. Um, this nylon string, 
the way it's braided, um, it grabs that tree bark, and so I need a need a smaller uh, rope and a heavier weight to get it started, and I can pull my bigger rope over with uh, the small rope once I get it started. All right, so we got that part done. Um, so we're going to take our trap. If you watched our previous video, if you haven't seen our previous video on how we set this up, I'll put that in the description as well. So if you haven't um, watched our previous video on how we set these up, I go back and watch it, but just a quick overview. We've got four frames in here, one old bird comb, three undrawn foundations because swarms come ready to build a comb. We've um, put four nails, two on each corners of our frames so they don't fall off the frame rest. And we've got a pipette, like a little scientific pipette with about a half to three quarter mil of lemongrass oil pinned in the back of this and it acts kind of as a time release. On top of that, we're gonna put a couple squirts of Swarm Commander on the entrance. And that trap's ready to go up. So we're gonna take our end here. I'm not a Boy Scout, so don't make fun of my knots. I'm just gonna tie this. A couple of good old granny knots. And we're gonna hoist her up. The other thing I used to use, I've got a big carabiner somewhere that I would put in here as a handle so the rope wasn't so hard on your hand. Just some stuff I haven't really gathered up yet this year. Going. That rope just about broke right there. Well, apparently this rope I have is not a very high quality. Well, the outer sheath of this rope has broke and I can't get that up there as high as I want so that's as high as I'm going to be able to get it so I'm going to take this back here and tie it off and then I need to leave enough rope to be able to get this back up and down from the tree if you cut it too short well, you won't be able to guide it down. I was going to leave a link in the description to the rope, but uh, I'm not going to do that now because that rope is kind of junk. So, like I said, the outer braiding uh, cut pulling across that limb and kind of messed it up. So we got that up high enough. That's probably roughly 12 feet or so. Um, the back's against the tree, so that's going to help it from moving in the wind. Ideally, I would have got those two um, straps over the tree as well, but um, the way it worked out, the cord um, frayed on us, and I wasn't able to do that. But that's sufficient. It's high enough. It's against the tree, so it's it's not going to uh, blow around too awful much um, and it's pretty secure so that's how we hang them with the uh, the rope like I said this wasn't the ideal situation I could have had a little better equipment and obviously some better rope but um, you get the gist that's just the kind of overall idea of how we hang these things so we'll move on and um, we will uh, um, show you how to hang one in a uh, or set one in a tree stand that's pretty self-explanatory we'll show you that as well but before we do that let's talk a little more about placement so we like to uh, I like to put these close to water ideally like I said before I've trapped most of my uh, bees in uh, wetland areas 
I like um, to put them on, you know, good, um, you know, geographical boundaries. So bees follow tree lines, roads, creeks. They use those as like um, travel corridors or, or their roads, so to speak. So anywhere you have a, you know, geographical boundary, such as a, um, a creek or a road or a field edge, the bees will travel those and that'll up your odds of catching a swarm. Um, the other thing that I've seen, I don't have any scientific proof to back this up, it's just an observation of mine, is uh, there seems to be a strong association with bees and catalpa trees. Um, I found several catalpa trees that are bee trees. Um, I've had high success trapping in and around catalpa trees and um, that seems to be a good, a good spot as well a good location if you know where some are. So if you follow kind of these simple, um, you know, steps on trap placement and, you know, trap setup, um, if there's bees in your area, you will catch them. And so we'll watch these swarm traps. We'll check on them every, uh, at least once a week and um, make sure that uh, everything's in good shape, that we haven't caught a swarm yet. We also want to be looking for scout activity. So, you know, we're just starting to get, it is, uh, um, March 20th right now we're just starting to get into our swarm season um, scout bees are just starting to check things out you know once we get full into swarm season if you put a trap out and within a week or so you know you haven't seen any scout bees if you've checked it on a regular basis it may be time to move that trap not every trap will be successful the traps that are successful you could catch multiple swarms in um, you put out 20 traps you may catch 20 swarms but that may be only in 12 or 15 of those traps. You may catch multiples in some traps and not catch anything at all. Uh, if you do catch a swarm in a location, there's a good chance you could catch a second swarm there, um, like a secondary swarm from the same hive or um, just another swarm altogether. So I always try to put a swarm trap up right back where I took one down from. So if you can, try to keep an extra swarm trap in reserve um, just for that reason and then you know if you catch one you have a swarm trap to go right back up with if not and you catch you know your first swarm catch you might go to one of those traps that you have not seen any bee activity pull that one down and put it back in place to the one that you caught bees in so let's keep moving we'll go find a tree stand to put one of these in and we'll show you how we do that all right so we're going to show you how we put these in a tree stand pretty self-explanatory how we do this um, just want to want you to be want you to know that there is this can be kind of dangerous. Um, if you're going to do this, you probably should wear a safety harness. Um, I don't wear one. Feel pretty comfortable in these tree stands. Doesn't mean that I can't fall out and get hurt. But I mean that you could have you know be seriously injured or killed falling out of a tree stand. Uh, happens every year with hunters. So the safest thing would be to wear a safety harness with this. But like I said, I you know I don't do that. I probably should, but I don't. So I'm gonna run up the ladder here and we'll show you um, exactly how we do this. So I've already got this one up here. If I didn't, I would uh, take a haul line and hook to it. I would get in the stand and hoist the thing up. It'd be a little more safe that way. But we just have a ratchet strap like in our other video. We have a ratchet strap that goes um, all the way around the box, hooks on both sides of the tree stand, and then ratchet it tight. And that keeps uh, the wind from blowing these out or a critter from knocking them out of the stand. Um, and it keeps everything together as well. So once we, we've already got our lemongrass oil in there, we've got our brood frame like you saw in the other video. Let's give it a couple squirts of lemongrass oil. Or sorry, a couple squirt, squirts of Swarm Commander. And um, this trap's ready to go. So like I said, this is... Uh, this is how we do them in the tree stands. Um, it's just kind of a convenient way. There's lots of tree stands available here um, where I'm trapping, and I'm allowed to use those. So it's just an easy way for me to put some swarm traps up. Um, but the, the rope method does work pretty well. Like I said, we're going to have some videos linked in here. Um, I guess I got two or three videos at this point. I got a video showing you how to build the bottoms to these 10 frame swarm traps. I got a video on how I um, set the frames up and put the lure in. And then I have a video from last year that kind of goes in depth about all different types of swarm trap. Um, you know, 
all different types of swarm traps and lures and different things. It's a little more detailed. If you never swarm trapped before, that'd be a good video for you to go back and watch. But all that stuff will be in the description along with some of the products I use, um, the strapping, um, the, the weight that you can use to get your line in the tree like we talked about earlier. Um, so just check out those links in the description and there'll be some helpful information there. We appreciate you watching our videos. Um, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And share our videos with your friends. We want to help everybody be the best beekeeper they can be. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.